What's up guys, today I have a very exciting video, something that I've been working on for a couple weeks now, and that is a giant comparison of 27 different pickleball paddles and which one produces the most spin for your shots. One thing I've found since I started playing pickleball is that there is so much marketing hype from all the different companies. You'll find a pickleball paddle that has a completely smooth face, yet the company's complaining that they have some of the best spin on the market. Another thing that really started to annoy me was that lots of players when they would get a new paddle would be like oh man I just get so much more spin with this paddle it's absolutely unbelievable but there's been no real way to measure that and without actual data it's kind of hard to say yeah this is putting so much more spin on it sure you may be able to feel the ball and see it a little bit but you don't really know for sure so what I did is I came up with a way to analyze the rpms of a ball I took a pickleball and then covered three-fourths of it in black Sharpie, so that way I could see the spin on the ball. Then I took my camera in 120 frames per second, and we would both film 10 shots each with the ball so that we could get an average of how much it was spinning instead of just taking one or even five results. Once I brought the video footage back home, I would find a spot where the ball was completely level after being hit. Then I would count how many video frames it took to complete one revolution on the ball. I would plug this into an RPM calculator, and then boom, it spits out the result. So that was my testing methodology for this. So this meant that between me and my brother we had to hit the ball 700 times and you would not believe how tiring that process is then after we did all that I had to come back home and manually analyze 700 shots to get all of this data so if that doesn't get you to smash that like button then Honestly, I don't know what will. And now before we get into this, I know we didn't test every paddle. I'm sure there are other paddles out there that also produce a good amount of spin, but it was already hard enough to source and get 27 paddles to test. We actually used uh, one of our local tennis and pickleball shops, Michael Linz, who lent us a ton of these paddles. So huge shout out to them. If you're from Minnesota, make sure to check them out. They carry many of the major pickleball brands as well as tennis shoes. And it's the shop in Minnesota that you need to go go to if you're looking for that stuff. So thank you, Michael Linz, for lending us so many of these paddles. In the future, I will definitely be testing more paddles, so if there's something you really want to see tested, leave a comment down below. All right, now the last thing before we get into this, I want you guys to go ahead and leave a comment right now and guess which paddle was the worst and which paddle was the best, because I think you guys are going to be pretty surprised at some of the results. I know that we were after testing these. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to be going through this video from the worst spin paddles all the way up to the best, and I've grouped them in three different categories. We've grouped them in the category of low spin, average spin, and then high amounts of spin. For us, we found that anything that was below 1200 RPM really didn't feel like you were getting a lot of spin on the ball and wasn't very ideal. Anything between 1200 and 1400 was a pretty fair amount of spin and was good to play with. And anything above 1500 was a very high amount of spin and you could get a lot of great shots with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through my brother's results first and then we can talk about both of ours later on in the video. All right, so in dead last, we have the head gravity light at 991 RPM and this was the only paddle that was under 1000 RPMs. From there, we have the Adidas car Carbon Control LD at 1007. Also, one thing I just want to mention before we move on is these Adidas paddles are complete garbage. I know there's not been a lot of content out there about them right now, but we tried them in the spin test and then just hit them back and forth a little bit. They honestly feel like cheap garbage. For 180 bucks or whatever they cost, they're terrible paddles. Pretty much everyone in my local group that I showed these to agreed that they felt like they were maybe $50 paddles. I would never play with these. The faces were completely smooth despite advertising that they have amazing spin. Please just save yourself the headache. If you were thinking about buying one of these, I would not even look into these. We all thought they were terrible paddles. We had a third shot drop custom paddle, which came in at 1,028. Paddletech Tempest Pro at 1,046. Adidas Carbon Control HD at 1,058, 
the Selkirk Vanguard Invicta at 1,071, and this actually surprised us quite a bit because many players think they get a lot of spin on their Invicta, but both me and my brother were under 1,100 RPM. Even our Invicta friends that are local in town, when they used our other paddles that generate more spin, they noticed a very noticeable increase. So I don't know what it is about the Invicta that gets very little spin. I mean, if you feel the face, it honestly feels paper thin. So yeah, we were surprised that the Invicta was so low on this test. From there, we have the Head Radical Tour GR at 1108, and then we had a Franklin Ben Johns paddle that is old and all the grit is completely worn off. If you guys know anything about these paddles, they're pretty known for the grit wearing off very quickly. This one was completely smooth to the touch, and this one also got 1108 RPM. And then the paddle that did best in the low spin category was the Paddletech Bantam EXL at 1172. So to me, the most surprising result in here was the Vanguard Invicta. Coming in at a $200 paddle, I would really expect it to be able to put more spin on the ball than that, but hey, that's the data we got. Moving on to the medium spin category or more average, we have the Engage Elite Maverick Pro at 1231 the Paddletech Tempest Wave 2 at 1255, the Gearbox GX6 Control at 1262, and now this result was one of the funniest ones to us, and that is an Onyx Recruit Wood Paddle. You can get two of these for $37 at Walmart, and this one came in at 1320 RPM, beating out a lot of premium paddles on the market. We thought this was absolutely hilarious, and the results between me and my brother were actually very consistent. He got 1320, I got 1360, and it's just absolutely hilarious to me that a wood paddle would beat out some of these other paddles on the market. All right, now getting into the 1400 RPM category, we have the Diadem Icon at 1416 the Diadem Warrior at 1428, and then the Onyx Premier also at 1428, the Engage Pursuit MX Non 6.0 at 1440, a brand new Franklin Ben Johns Black Paddle at 1452. So as you can see, there's actually a very big jump between the old Ben Johns when the grit is worn out and a new Ben Johns when the grit is new. So if you are someone who likes that paddle and spin is something you care about, a 300 RPM difference is pretty big. Me and my brother both found that paddles when you jumped about 300 RPM is when the spin became noticeable. So 1000 versus 1300 was pretty noticeable, 1200 to 1500 was a noticeable jump, and 1300 to 1600 was a big jump. So you're losing a pretty noticeable amount of spin once that grit is worn off the Ben Johns paddle. Then we have the Babylot Monster Touch at 1476 and the Selkirk SLK at 1488, which is a $100 paddle. That one honestly surprised me because the face does feel pretty smooth. It's not very gritty. Obviously, there's more that goes into a paddle being able to generate spin than just the face, but I wasn't expecting a $100 more budget-friendly paddle going to be up at the higher end of spin. And now lastly, we've got the high RPM category. And in this category, we have the Selkirk Amped Epic at 1500 RPM, the Babylot Monster Power at 1512, the Pro Kenic Speed 2 at 1520, the Engage Pursuit EX 6.0 at 1550, the Pro Kenix Pro Flight at 1560, the Carbon 6 millimeter at 1584, the Electrum Pro at 1650, the Carbon 13 millimeter at 1680. And then finally in first place, we have the Engage Encore MX 6.0 at a whopping 1788 RPM. When my brother was hitting this ball, it was absolutely flying. And I was honestly shocked when I got into my video editor and started calculating the results because 1788 is really high. And that ball is spinning very fast in those tests. So those were the results for my brother. My results were honestly very similar. I'm not going to go over all of them so I don't bore you. I'm actually going to have a link to a spreadsheet in the description if you want to see the comparison between both of us. 
All of the results were very similar except for a couple paddles that were off by just a bit. The most noticeable one being the Engage MX Encore 6.0. My brother set the highest RPM at 1788 while mine was somewhere around 1100. I don't know why mine was so much worse. That could be my technique with the paddle. Uh, it could have just been a fluke. I don't know. Unfortunately, I didn't get to retest this result before filming this video because a friend of ours owns that paddle and I don't have immediate access to it. All right, so something I forgot to mention while recording this video that I thought was really interesting is some of the 13 millimeter paddles were at the very top. The general thought in pickleball has always been that the thicker the paddle is, the longer the ball will sit on the face, which means you can spin the ball more. And while that may not necessarily not be true, you look at the Carbon 13 millimeter, the Electrum Pro, which is 13 millimeter, and then the Pro Kenix paddles, these were all over 1500 RPM, and they are very thin paddles. Now you do have some thicker paddles in that list, like the Engage Encore MX 6.0, the Engage EX 6.0, and then the Babolat paddles, but I think this is something really interesting to note. It doesn't mean just because a paddle is thicker that it's guaranteed to put more spin on the ball. Now, another thing I wanna mention is that depending on the type of player you are, a spin paddle really might not matter for you. We had one of our other friends test some of these paddles out. He tested about five of them, and his results were almost identical across all five paddles, even with ones that he should have had a noticeably higher result. So some people just naturally have a more flat ground stroke than other people. So that's just one thing to keep in mind is that depending on who you are as a player, some of these paddles may not even benefit you that much. All right, so those are the results, guys. I hope this has helped you understand which pickleball paddles put the most spin on the ball. I thought these results were honestly really interesting, and as I play and test more paddles, I'm absolutely going to be adding these to the spreadsheet so that you guys can keep track of it, as well as when I do future reviews, I'll make sure that I always include the results of the spin that that paddle got, because I think it's something that's definitely worth noting. All right, now just one thing, before you guys get worried about your paddle not putting a lot of spin on the ball or putting a lot on the ball don't let this be the sole factor that you buy a paddle there are so many other factors when choosing a pickleball paddle that are important like how soft it is how much power it can generate grip size and all of that this is just something that i wanted to make to really kind of disprove some of the marketing material out there. You know, I think there's just a lot of marketing out there that tries to hype you up and make you believe that their paddle puts the most spin on the ball. But in my testing, a lot of them really weren't that true. So I just want you to be aware of this when you're making a decision about the paddle that you're going to choose. If spin is really important to you, then that might eliminate some of the paddles out there for you. So I hope that this helps you guys make an informed decision about what you go and buy, but please don't let it be the end all be all. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more content just like this. I've got some more tests in the future that I think you guys are gonna wanna stick around for. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.